on two wheels this week. More metalheads, more from Tommy Topbox and BMW's Cruiser. But first, a visit to some motocross in Cheshire. Impressive stuff, eh? We're actually at Nantwitz in Cheshire, and it is in the fact 1998, the middle of summer. It's a beautiful day. And what are these lads doing out here? Well, it's an international motocross. In fact, they have two things in common. These things, twin shocks. It's the Twin Shock International, and I tell you what, they're very impressive. This is an international Grand Prix. So as well as people from all over the British Isles, we've got people here from Holland, Belgium, Sweden, and there's even a guy, would you believe, all the way from America, who's brought his own butty wagon. Well, this event is actually called the Wolf Sport Twin Shock Grand Prix. Bill, you're very, very involved in this. I mean, you're a sponsor of the event and you're an organiser. Hi, what, what th thank you, know? thank you, Wayne. It's uh, I'm, I'm not really an organiser, I suppose. My my capacity here is just encouragement. You're right, event sponsor. Um, I mean, Wolf Sport clothing, I've always felt I've got good backup off all these riders here over the years. And you've got some international riders, haven't you? So, From some everywhere. really good ones. That we've been, we've been very lucky. We've got Jorgen Nilsson, who's uh, world number two. In fact, really, he should have been world champion. You know, he, he lost it with DNFs in 93. Jorgen, probably, as you know, had, had a severe paralysis as well. He, he caught it at, uh, he got it at a Stuttgart Supercross. Yeah. He's come back just for the sport. And he, and he loves it. Yeah. We've got Rex Staten here from America, Rocket Rex. Probably one of the most winningest riders that there's ever been in motocross. He's got 15 national titles yeah. to his credit. It's unbelievable. Right? Oh, yeah. yeah. He's got three Vet World Championships. He's got, he was the, uh, the outright American champion. He was the bloody South African champion, for Christ's sake. I can't believe just how, how much well, the guy's done. Forgive me for interrupting now, then, but how on earth did you get them to come here to Nantwich? And why have you chosen Nantwich? Nantwich circuit. I would rate, personally, as probably the best in the country. It's a natural circuit. On a and rider's it, point of view it is, and it's good for spectators, isn't it's it? Because you can see so much of it, it from it, one place. Absolutely everything, but even between races, you know, you'll go and watch the, the other race as a rider. Yeah, and you'll yeah. think, let's have a look, what's the lines, where they're going, you know, who's doing what. You can just walk over virtually at any point and see it, mm -hmm. you know, and just see what's going on. Another, I mean, another thing about Nandwich, the club themselves, you know, the organisers, Bill Shaw, Bob McMinn, you, you just couldn't ask for more support than, yeah, than, than we've had here. Because right, it's a big brilliant. job organised. I mean, I can't believe yeah. how many people are here. There's. I mean, yeah, totally. you've got sort of 250 riders or something. Oh, I am. Yeah, yeah, blinking out. Right. And those are just the ones that's been bothered to end, you know. The, oh, they are. Yeah, yeah, most, like that, most, most of the twin shockers, I mean, they're, they're a breed of their own. Give us a go, mate. Oh, I, yeah. I, well, it's not give us a go. They're all ex-riders, they're all ex-stars, they're all ex-national champions. But there's a lot of them will have an odd ride and they'll maybe like the idea of it, and they'll have a bike at home and they'll turn out for a run win. But these are the ones that admit it to themselves. They want to race. Yeah. You know, they're unashamed. They, they go for it. Yeah. 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 Okay, even if I don't win again, I couldn't give a shit. You know, I want to get out, <laughs> I want to race. Yeah. Excellent. This is our famous man from the US of A, Rex State, an American motocross champion. What, twin shock? Does, does twin shock mean something to you? Is that why you're here? Yeah, what happened a long time ago, back in 68 when we first started racing, that's what we used to have was twin shocks. You know, we only had really about four inches of travel back then. Now it's got up to about 10 inches, but still, the new, modern bike's all single shock now, and they got running between 13 and 14 inches of travel. Right. And, uh, they, you know, in the United States for the last two years, I've been number one over there on the vintage bike, or we call the classic in the United States, over here you guys call the twin shocks, and uh, they called me up and asked me if I would come over, and I said, sure, no problem, I'll be here, right. just give me a bike. And you're here, and you got a bike, and this is different type of track, though, to what you're used to, I mean, different racing, how are we getting on with it? Yeah, what happened, back in 68, we used to have tracks like this, this is like a motocross track, this is a natural terrain and everything, you know, yeah. we're in America now, we have a lot of supercross stuff into the natural tracks, mm -hmm. where you got the big doubles and stuff like that, where you're yeah. doing, you know, you got to time everything this perfect, because if you don't, you get hurt really bad. And uh, I like the European tracks, and I wish America stayed that way, you know, but 
it's just because the new modern times and everything, you know, everybody wants to see everybody all close together and all, well, they want to see that high flying, banging and slamming and, <laughs> and that. And it's yeah. good for the young kids and stuff, but for us old guys, after we turn 40, I mean, we don't, we get tired of that, you know, we already had our bangs and our bruises and everything. Yeah. Now we just kind of wait and just go out and have a good time with all of us old guys and we have a great time. Well, I'm joined here by Jorgen Nielsen, who's just been out practicing. He's got a bit of a sweater, haven't you, Jorgen? Yeah. <laughs> and you would note from his uh, T-shirt here, he's from Sweden. It's a long way to come from Sweden, but it's worth it, I'm sure it is, is it? Yeah, it's, it's a great day and uh, a lot of fun to ride on this track. Yeah. How about the track compared to tracks back home in Sweden? Uh, well, in Sweden we have mo mostly sand tracks, yes, you know, yes. real bumpy ones, and, but this is my favourite. Is this a little quicker yeah. maybe than back home? Yeah, probably quicker and uh, much more technical. Yeah. yeah, are you looking forward to the race later oh, on yeah. this afternoon? Yeah. yeah. You've been out practicing, have you been trying to get the bike to suit yourself? Is this yeah. what you've been doing? Yeah, yeah. because yeah. I'm not used to ride this uh, Maikos. Uh, are you not? No, I have a Honda back home and uh, a, mo a modern bike. Yeah. And, uh, it takes a while to, to dial everything in. Oh. And, yeah. Carburetor and uh, tires and stuff, but no, it's back is good now. Uh -huh. yeah. BSA, not the sort of thing to be normally found at a modern motocross meeting, but all the bikes here this weekend are older machines. This is a pre-65 machine. Now, there isn't a pre-65 class here this weekend, so it's running in the pre-77. But it qualifies for the job. It's a basic bike, single cylinder, 500cc, and the thing that makes it qualify is these, twin shocks. Getting on a bit now, but still doing the business. So if you fancy something just a little bit more modern, this is early 80s. And this is a 490 Mako, four speed gearbox, awesome amount of power, drum brakes, front and rear, supersonic big long forks. The whole thing is massive. Same association though, twin shocks, two of these babies. Now there is actually a class ideal for me. A 40s class, I've noticed in the programme. An over 40s, yeah. perfect, eh? The only drawback is, can't get my leg over. Another uh, foreign guest, um, Herman van Litt, have I, have I said that right? Yes, it's completely right, uh, Herman van Litt. Brilliant, Holland. you've got to be multi multilingual now to do this job these days. From Holland? Yes. Right, how are you fi finding the mud in Cheshire? Oh, it's lovely, I'll, <laughs> but uh, I prefer this day is nicer because if the sun is shining, it's a track is also much nicer as yesterday, yeah. because the mud could be dangerous yeah. for all the people and we are coming for racing and not for accidents, of course. Of course, yeah, and, but in Holland you normally ride on sand, is that yes. right? Uh, yeah. 90 9% in Holland is sand. Yeah. We have one or two tracks in Holland uh, on these conditions, but then we have flat, flat, and not uh, the hills we don't have. Right. And do you have twin shocking in Holland? Yes, it's going to start now. It is about the competition for about one or two years to set up, and uh, it begin to be popular now. Right. So I go to race now. If I'm coming back, I, I go to start also in the twin shock. Right. So you're going to go to Holland and spread the good news and said you should all be twin shocking. Yes. It's great. Of course, it is not so big as in, here in England because in England it is crazy. Uh, and I'm very amazed that there are so many bikes here in yeah. the twin shock. Oh, in big. Holland is about uh, in the in the twin shock class about uh, 40 riders every every right. two weeks they are racing. Yeah, we've got 200 and, 240 out here this yes. weekend. Yeah, yes. that's unbelievable. Never go at this sport quite cheaply you know what you need is a pair of them boots you need some trolleys you need a shirt the shirt goes over the body armor 
Of course, you need a helmet. Add that lot together and you can kit yourself out for less than 400 quid. You can buy a bike for a thousand pounds. That is cheap motorsport, I can assure you. Why don't you have a go? This is Metalhead. And this is Metalhead. What pisses me off about I hate fing cars who pull out on you and then you smack into them like I did, and you fly over the bonnet, land knee first, go to the hospital, and then you end up being off the road waiting, you know, for your compensation so you can get another bike. Now, that's what happened to me. So that's what pisses me off. Hiya, my name's Lorna, I'm from Blackpool, and this is Metalhead. And I would like to say I love the scooter rallies. I've got no grievances and if you want to come, come because it's great fun for the family. What annoys me is that all the kids that are passed by in the back of the scooter, they all look and give me a dead funny look and start laughing. And what really annoys me is people start shouting at me, oh Jimmy you forgot your sandwiches. Now that is just so annoying. <laughs> and the other thing is, people get scooters mixed up with mopeds too much. Like, People run around on these little poxy things with only half a panel. Just ain't right. And then calling them scooters afterwards. That's all I really got to say. In the news this week, the Motorcycle Retailers Association has welcomed the government's announcement that from the 1st of March 1999, there will be a biannual prefix change on British number plates. It says there will now be a more even spread of bike sales throughout the year, with a further new bike boost in November. And with many motorcycle and scooter manufacturers now offering models and accessories specifically designed for women, it's no surprise that over 12,000 women qualified to ride a motorcycle during 1997. The scooter boom has also been recognised by them. Rather than travel alone at night on public transport, Many women are choosing to ride a scooter instead. And coming up after the break, Jeff rides BMW's Cruiser and there's more nonsense from Tommy Topbox. And we're home on the range or back at the ranch, whatever you want to say. But this is BMW's new R1200C Cruiser. But I'm too hot to talk about it while I've got my Maverick outfit on. So I'll get this off and then I'll tell you all about it. Well, I suppose the most dominant feature of the BMW is this massive alloy forging, which is the lower link of the wishbone suspension for the front telelever. These aren't telescopic front forks as such as we know them. There's the stanchion, this is the slider, but there's no hydraulics in there. It's all in the center as in the spring. And as I say, that actually dominates the whole machine. There's no mistaking that one. But down on the front wheels here, as you can see, they're spoke wheels, but these have got tubeless tyres on. Now, anyone who knows about um, tyres and spoke wheels, the spokes let the air out. But not these, because the spokes actually run to the edge of the rim and come out just round the edge here, which is really clever. So um, normally spokes in the centre, these on the edge, tubeless tyres, but still the old classic look. Brembo calipers and discs, floating discs at that. Well, back up top, on top of the forks, we've got the instrument panel, but it's a work of art, this one is. This sort of heavy metal theme is carried right through the bike. So here we have this satin chrome finished um, little panel with all the indicator lights for um, your indicator, battery warning, choke and all the rest of it. Even the key, just look at this, an engineered key, would you believe, on a solid steel key fob. No little hole in there to put it on your key ring, but it'll probably knock a hole in your trousers anyway. And um, then you've got this rather classic styled speedo there, very nice with the black lettering on the white background. This metal finish treatment extends to every part of the bike, even the hoses are covered in a stainless steel sort of spring but it gives that metallic um, look to it all, they're not braided, just a nice little covering there. Moving up to the actual control levers, both the brake and the clutch, they've even got a satin chrome finish reservoir cap on there, fits nicely with the matte black there. Then look at these for um, handlebar grips here, chrome either end, but a leather sleeve in the middle. Very nice. The rest of the gear is familiar BMW indicator switches, etc. 
So moving through the bike and all these massive castings, this cast aluminium section here is part of the frame, but it neatly houses the oil cooler within there. But again, a very imposing piece of kit. That comes down, more little louvered features, a bit sort of Flash gordon -y really, but um, very nice. Massive chrome covers to the uh, valve covers on top of each, um, each cylinder. There's loads of neat touches on this bike, including the plug covers, which normally are sort of everyday things, but these are neatly moulded straight into the top of the uh, valve cover there. Very neat. Then moving along, you see the tubular part of the frame here, which extends from that casting at the front, making the pivot for the swinging arm here on the back of the uh, gearbox. And then monoshock mounting down here to the classic BMW shaft drive and another spoked wheel at the back in the same sort of way as the front one is allowing a tubeless tyre. Moving up to the seat or I should really say saddle because calling it a seat does it a disservice. It's all trimmed in um, leather, beautifully comfortable, beautiful shape and not only that it's even got a little backrest. This pillion pad here doubles up as a backrest. You just pull a catch here, click it up and there we go. Easy rider. Martin, this is the beast. What is the philosophy behind this new well, projectile? Well, it's very simple, Jeff. Um, as always, it, it, it's about the market. Um, the world market for cruising motorcycles is expanding rapidly. Indeed, now uh, in the Western world, uh, the market is worth about 300,000 units, which is about a third of the total available market. So every one in three motorcycles that's built today is a cruiser. So BMW didn't want to miss out on this oh, then. Of course not. lucrative market. Of yeah. course not. <laughs> but it, it, must have, it was a, a big step change for you though, wasn't it? I mean, you've never been associated with anything like the sort of custom cruiser market before. Must have taken some soul searching. No, it's, it's an entirely new design. And you can see from uh, the, cruisers, uh, the BMW cruiser's appearance, very radical. Um, but I would say also very up to date. It incorporates all of the modern technological features that have been the trademark uh, of BMW in recent years. The BMW Cruiser is something that you would never have thought BMW would have made, but in a world where the cruiser market has gone from only a sixth of the market to over a third in the past ten years, BMW thought differently, very differently, and this is it, the R1200C Cruiser. Sculptured from the solid is how it looks, but solid as it might look, this is no unwieldy, wheezy pretender to the Harley throne. This is a motorbike in its pure, no-frill sense, and a high-tech one to boot. A hallmark of BMWs for nearly 75 years, the horizontally opposed flat twin engine is their biggest ever. A fuel injected 1200cc monster with bucket sized pistons that give a whole new meaning to the word character. At 61 horsepower it's not going to frighten you, but bags of low down torque burbling away from the cleverly muted exhaust lets you cruise smoothly through the 5 speed gearbox in real cruiser style. But if the engine's got character, the rest has got panache. While other cruisers tend to be very conventional, this one has the much acclaimed telelever front end and flaunts the technology with a gleaming alloy wishbone controlling a single front suspension unit. The rear end uses the well-proven monolever setup in conjunction with another BMW hallmark, shaft drive. All in all, this cruiser rides like no other. It's more of a hustler than a high plains drifter, giving a firm but subtle ride with no wallowing. But watch out for decking out at only modest angles of lean. Brembo 4 pots squeezing twin 300mm floating discs up the front and a single Brembo setup at the rear gives the sort of braking that this bike deserves. Power, but subtle with it. At 256 kilos, it's no lightweight, but then again, a cruiser is built for comfort, not for speed. And in any case, it's no heavier than its compatriots in this class. 
Talking of comfort, the rider's seat is more like a saddle than a seat and really gives you that part of the machine feel. Not so sure about the pillion though, more like a bird's perch. Pun intended, of course. At 9,750 you can have your cruiser in this rather classic ivory, a cool black or a snazzy canyon red metallic. But we warned, you're buying into a lifestyle here and this is just the start. BMW call it their cruiser world, an emotionally satisfying experience, which translated means 27 items of rider and lifestyle equipment for you to choose from. Mind you, I must say I rather like the Maverick suit, I'll just have to buy a BMW now. Last week I touched on the subject of accessories, but you know as well as I do that all these companies offer roughly the same thing. And tonight, if I may, I'd like to suggest an alternative custom style. A style that will set you apart from the crowd, and a style that will set me up for life if you should be actually so gullible as to buy anything. First off, here we have the Tommy Top Box leaded screen. Forget smoked and tinted, recreate the serenity of rural England in the 30s with one of these. A snip at $69.99. Over here, instead of the common seat um, we have a miniature garden. Now this is one where you can really express yourself. It's a real talking point. You can add all sorts of little accessories, like this windmill, or even a, a little gnome. Of course, this is uh, an action figure. I'm not suggesting that you put an action figure in here. That would be ridiculous. No, I'm working on uh, miniature bike spot. Uh, gnomes here, so you can put in uh, a little Carl Fogarty or a Mick Doohan, whichever your preference. Or for a modest fee of course. Next week we'll take a look at Victorian carriage style indicators and as an option to a fancy paint job we'll discuss the practicalities of stone clad in your fairing. On two wheels next week for those of you looking for that different kind of biking activity and perhaps wondering where to go on a Saturday morning, we take a trip to a Speedway school. <laughs>